Good morning, Mystical Misfits. It's uh, 7 o'clock, came uh, awfully fast uh, for me last night. I was up till about midnight doing some uh, remodeling uh, down in a basement apartment. So, uh, uh, but I'm awake thanks to uh, coffee. So, uh, this morning, uh, as a kind of intro, I want to uh, continue with the 10 principles for listening to that still small voice. And uh, just a moment here, let me just get my page up here. Today I am monitoring the Darkwood Brew uh, Facebook page, so if I don't acknowledge you and you've been sending a comment, just know that I'm looking at the, uh, the Darkwood Brew page today because we have a lot of people uh, coming to that as well. So um, anyway, uh, today we consider, uh, we go with um, uh, uh, Principle 7 of the 10, and if you want to see the previous ones, just look back. Incidentally, I do this Monday through uh, Friday at 7 a.m. during uh, uh, Central Time during Lent and at uh, uh, 7 p.m. Tuesdays and Thursdays, so I'll be on, uh, or 9 p.m. I'll be on tonight too. See, I'm a little tired. So, uh, principally being, uh, once you've taken a step forward, believing it's where God is calling you, don't keep second-guessing yourself. Tell God, I'm going to move with confidence in this direction until or unless you start sending signals to change course. Then, stay open to those signals in case they come. God finally starts throwing us confirming signals when we've, uh, or normally <laughs> starts throwing us con confirming signals when we've made a good decision, though they may not come in the forms we expect. Um, I learned a big lesson about this years ago. Um, when I had I was sick and I stayed home uh, and read about 200 pages of a prayer journal I I keep and um, and after the end of, of that um, I was uh, very happy and very devastated at the same time with, with two insights one was that it showed that uh, hey good to see you guys on by the way um, one is that uh, I was actually uh, proud of myself that I act, uh, it seemed like if I felt like uh, the spirit was calling me in a certain direction um, I would follow it and and even if it meant great risk and so I was kind of you know patting myself on the back for that um, because I had solid proof uh, in my prayer journal however what was devastating was that oftentimes I would be beating myself up all along the way thinking I'd got you know, things uh, didn't happen the way I thought they would. I mean, I may have seen the kind of the, the basic purpose, but the way I you know, saw that being fulfilled was very different. And so all along the way, I, I, I would keep, keep being myself up, even though in hindsight, I could see, no, actually, God was leading me in, in a very good direction and um, appropriate and so forth. And uh, so um, you just kind of have to, to um, keep going without doing that unless you're you know shown some good solid uh, signs that um, you shouldn't be going that way and that doesn't necessarily mean external circumstances you know uh, go poorly um, imagine Jesus uh, following that kind of principle uh, no it has to do with continuing the you know feeling that that sense of flow in your life in terms of uh, those gut in instincts that um, keep producing a sense of uh, peace or quiet joy um, I remember when I was on the walk across the country, I, you know, this was a prime example of me uh, absolutely uh, following, uh, I believed ever since, that was over, that was 13 years ago, that that, that was following uh, very much a call from God, and, and our whole group did. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I set out from Phoenix envisioning we would end with a huge event, like half a million people in Washington, D.C., rallying about progressive Christianity. And... Um, we had you know, like 300 people in a Methodist church there. Um, so things didn't go like we thought they would. They kept feeling like they were going in the right direction all the way along, though. They felt, um, I mean, that we always felt, felt that sense of peace and joy calling us forward, like we were doing the right thing, things were happening the way they should. But because they didn't fit my mind's eye what, what was going on, I kept thinking, what am I doing wrong? <laughs> what are we, you know, what, 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 what's going on? And do we get it wrong and what have you? And so you did a lot of things that were, you know, had a lot of mental uh, anxiety that was really unnecessary. And, um, you know, thankfully I followed, you know, my more trusted my gut along the way. So I did feel a great deal of peace and joy um, on that walk. But um, it was it's interesting. There were some d distinct points where I, I was uh, 
you know, really hard on myself <laughs> and really hard sometimes on God uh, too. Um, but uh, so keep keep going, keep uh, following that direction. It's like a flow, you know, of a river. Um, keep sensing if you sense that flow, keep going. And if you don't, if you feel like you're absolutely uh, going against the flow, well, that says something too. Sometimes you head out in a certain direction, but then you know the call is to shift. So you you know the the direction may have been good and right for a long time, but then it's no longer good and right because you're you're asked to go in another direction. So just things to bear in mind. The spirit, you know, in a sense, likes to dance with us. I think. I mean, you know, there's ne never a straight line between a sense of call and what happens. There's, it's usually, you know, it kind of goes like this, and and uh, and it keeps us attentive. Uh, it keeps us in relationship rather than just some sort of, sort of you know, go to point B <laughs> from point A, and and that's it. So, um, you know, I think there's a reason for that. Uh, it helps us train us on. Um, Kind of recognizing God's voice and and responding to it without uh, being mechanical about it. Well, let's uh, pull up our. Um, hey, good morning, Andrea. Good to see you online on the Darkwood Brew page, and um, and we'll we'll get going. Uh, today I'm using the uh, a G uh, bell for the uh, crystal singing bowl, and. Uh, Let's begin, I'll, uh, if you haven't done this before, f four or five minute segments, and I will give you instructions as we go through about what to do. We're following a pretty standardized format uh, during this time, just so during Lent, so we get used to it, um, and it kind of gets ingrained in you. The, the more you do this, the faster you can get into it uh, later, and, um, and you can also extend uh, this out quite a bit, uh, do the first three stages, and then take that fourth one and go as long as you want. Okay, so let's take a deep breath in, and as the ring of the bell fades, just let your day so far fade away, your concerns, your anxieties, we bow internally, uh, like a bow of the head, acknowledging we're in the presence of spirit all the time, but aware of it little of the time. We also call to our awareness those who are joining us live online, linking our hearts to theirs, helping each other out as we go deeper. Let's think about the last 24 hours of our lives now. This is an ancient practice, goes back almost a thousand years. What do you have to, to give thanks for? Especially those touches of love from other people or that we've given. The scriptures remind us that God is love, so being touched by love is being touched by God, and touching another person in love is touching God.
attention to someone we care about or someone we care to pray for. Could be someone we don't care about, but we're in, we're in conflict with. But let's uh, consider where their struggle is, mental, physical, spiritual. Find that location in our own soul, our own body. And as we bow still further to spirit, uh, opening ourselves more fully to the presence of holiness that surrounds us at all times, let it into ourselves. Let the spirit in, let the healing in, let the vital light in. And we can start to feel this in yourself then gently guide it to the next, this person. Call them into your mind's eye. If you can focus on love for them, as well as that healing, that clears the channel. It's one of the reasons why Jesus says we can love our enemies. We're going to need to pray for them. Since God is love, it makes that channel more powerful. Remember, you're not drawing on your own energy to heal someone, to help someone. You're letting it into you, letting it flow through you, putting up as little barrier as possible to that flow.
Now let's call our attention to ourselves. Let this other person fade to the edge of our consciousness. Ask yourself what you need today, this coming week. What you need enough that you're going to continue to return to that prayer. Something that strikes you on a soul level. Try to articulate that need as precisely as possible. You may want to focus on uh, also something in nature that you come across regularly that whenever you see it, it'll remind you of your prayer. This can be a powerful way of continuing to stay in touch with that prayer. Is there a particular tree or maybe you see a bird or kind of bird, that kind of thing, will remind you, not overly much, but regularly. As we bow more deeply, open ourselves more fully, take down even more barriers between yourself and your beloved. You don't need to plead to God for what you need. Remember, God loves you. God wants to give good things to you. Just name it and open yourself. Remind yourself of your love for your beloved and your beloved's love for you.
let our own needs fade, setting them aside for the moment. And bow most deeply, surrender most fully, open to the point where there is no longer an edge to that circle of openness. I envision myself lying prostrate, not groveling, not afraid, but simply most vulnerable, most trusting. Let your heart be open. Simply content to be in your Creator's presence. Let your Creator simply allow you to be there with no thoughts or to strike up some conversation. Focus on your love, your openness, and let your mind go where it will.
Some of you may want to continue this meditation if you're deep in the woods, if you have the time. So I'll simply close gently. Thank you for being here, for joining your hearts with the rest of us, your heart. Have a most blessed day.